the blue and white for the Tar Heels. Duke ranked eighth in the country, North Carolina number four. Leitner and Chilcutt. Tip controlled by Leitner and Duke. Hurley swings it over to Thomas Hill, takes the baseliner. Too strong, and Rodel with the rebound. Henrik Rodel with the rebound. Rice driving, scoring. Then nothing new here. King Rice has exploded against Duke on occasions. This matchup, Rice and Hurley, one of the best you'll ever see at point guards going after each other who really don't even like each other. They're pretty open about that, too. Exchanged words in the papers this week. Here's a three by Hill. He's 0 for 2 from the floor. Lakner on the rebound, left-handed. Followed by Grant Hill. Slapped away by the foul called on North Carolina. So Leitner. freshman Grant Hill will go to the line for Duke. Leitner with that little left-hand touch. He's really developed a total game. He can step outside, shoot the three. He's got the ball that he can put on the floor. He also, on the inside, can use the right or left hand. An outstanding player. I said he leads him in uh, points and rebounds. Also leads Duke in steals and blocks. Now Grant Hill, the freshman from Ruston, Virginia. Struggled early in his freshman campaign from the line, but has been better in the second half of the season. Missing the first. Dennis Young Man's destined to be uh, one of the great ones at Duke University. The two injuries that he suffered, well, hip pointer and the broken nose has stymied him somewhat, but back in the lineup now at full strength. Missed three full games because of it. There's a pass down court to Rodel. Gets it back out to Rice, and Fox takes the three for Carolina. Chip cut, offensive rebound, but goes out of bounds, belongs to Duke. And that's something you'll hear often today from Chilcutt, offensive rebound. Probably the best offensive rebounding player in the ACC. Full court pressure. A little bit of a mirage there, really not a lot of intensity with it. Hill watched closely by Lynch. Swings it over to Hill. In the corner, Hurley. It's a two. Both teams with excellent touch passing and cross-court passing. First field goal of the game for Duke. Rice driving and traveling. And what King Rice does, he does not go to the foul line very often. So if you know that and you're playing against him, you say, here's a man that drives a lot but doesn't go to the line a lot. So consequently, he must pass a lot off the drive. So you have to hang tight with your men outside because he's looking to dish. Grant Hill gets the baseline move and slams it home. Took the step right by George Lynch. Another interesting thing about Carolina, the concept of playing. They like to force you on that baseline and have for years, but now the kids can dunk on that baseline. I don't really know if it's as good a move. Offensive foul called on Lynch. And watch the move a moment ago by Grant Hill. This is what I'm talking about, Jim. Before guys became athletic enough on the college level to take it to the hoop and dunk, Carolina used to be able to come from the weak side and stop that play, but as guys now can put it on the floor and go directly to the basket, it becomes more difficult. So Billy Lynch has two fouls already. Double team on Leitner. Skip pass to Hurley. He'll take the three. Too strong. Look at Hill way up in the air. Follows it up. No good. Rebound underneath Davis. High off the glass. Unable to convert after a lot of effort. Now, Leitner did not do a good job in that play. He stood outside, thought one of those would go. Bounce pass inside the choke cut, got away from Fox. Hurley leads the pass to Hill and out of bounds. Off the fingertips of Grant Hill. Well, that's one of the things that Mike Krzyzewski has not wanted to take away from Hurley, and that's his aggressive nature. But that pass really wasn't there because Lynch did a good job getting back. Mike Krzyzewski told us yesterday, if we wilt right away, we're going to lose this game. If we stand up to them right away, we've got a chance to win. <laughs> Opening minutes, he deemed critical, and his team forces a turnover from Carolina. Davis was looking to take his man towards the ball and then back door. It was interesting watching these two coaches, and there you see one of the great ones there, Dean Smith. His counterpart, Mike Krzyzewski, on the other end. Watching them practice yesterday, it's amazing how they both kind of mirrored each other as to what they wanted to make work and what they wanted to stop. Backdoor cuts were one of them. Hill again on the baseline. Finds Davis coming through. Slam dunk and a foul. There's some strength there. Davis, knowing he's going to get fouled, goes for the dunk. 
And Lynch with his power can't stop it. And Lynch has three fouls as Davis came in on the pass from Grant Hill. Excellent passing. Hill, who could play even a point guard position if he has to, is an excellent passer down in low. So Lynch uh, will go to the bench. Replaced by freshman Clifford Rozier. Davis converts it, three-point play. Duke on an eight-to-nothing run. Very unusual to see Carolina over the years in these games get behind early. She'll cut. He doesn't take long to put it up, does he, Billy? No, Got a he, quick release. He really does. He catches the ball and keeps it high in the air. Never brings it down below his numbers. Curly Rice right with him out high, but they call Rice for reaching in. Hurley, a sophomore, Rice, a senior, and head-to-head, -head, here's, uh, here's how they've played. Hurley only 22% from the floor. Did not score in the last game, although he did have eight assists in that game. Hurley, three-pointer. Three Second good outside shot that Bobby Hurley has made. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense if he can make that one. He's got five points, averaging 11. You can see how Duke is really pressuring the ball. They make it so tough, they can test every pass inside, which makes the cuts inside more difficult. North Carolina has attempted three shots and they've turned it over four times down the floor. Hey, now here, now here is a good piece of officiating. As we saw down in the Arkansas-Vegas game, the kids start going after each other verbally early on. The officials didn't do much about it, and you know what happened as the game progressed. And here's what... A good piece of officiating is stop it early on. If every kid wants to play in this kind of game. And they come right back and follow it up with a foul away from the ball on Leitner. His first team foul number one on Duke. Jim, what Duke is doing, they're really putting pressure on the ball no matter how far away it is from the basket. Notice that. Leitner, even though Chilcott would never shoot from out there, is making the pass so difficult. Grant Hill got a little too cozy, and he is called for the foul. His first team foul number two. Well, what's happening with the officiating is that you can see they want to stay right on top of this game early on, let the kids settle down. Hill goes to the bench along with Davis, and McCaffrey and senior Greg Kubek come in for Duke. Surprisingly, Jim, and you pointed this out to me yesterday, is the second leading scorer on this team, but does not start of late. Well, he had a big start on the season, then an ankle sprain slowed him down. Short cut left open. He'll take the three. Good outside shooter. Almost gets the roll. Underneath. They call it on Rozier of North Carolina. His really? first team foul number five. They're really calling it tight. Time out on the floor. Duke with an 11 to 4 lead just four minutes into this contest. I want to show a difference between philosophy and how to play the game. Here's the three point line. Pete Chilcutt with the ball has only taken six threes all year. But look at how he's being guarded by Christian Leitner. And it's going to make the pass very difficult to go inside for the cutters. Some coaches say don't play a man out there that far away from the basket if you know he's not going to shoot. But you can see that Mike Krzyzewski is not going to allow any pass to be an easy one. Chill cut on the bench. And Eric Montross, freshman from Indianapolis, in for Carolina. Good solid screen. Hook belts to the floor. Leitner delivering the screen. Hurley a little uh, too loose on that drive and penetration off the hands, however, of the heels. Jim, the reason for that screen being so effective is two freshmen involved defensively for North Carolina. Montross should have been talking there. Instead, he didn't say anything, and his teammate just got whacked. Kubek says, why not? Three-pointer in and out, and Montross with the board. Derek Phelps, freshman point guard, giving King Rice some minutes on the bench. 
Here's what Carolina worked on yesterday. The back door cuts, but Duke not giving him the pass. Hubert Davis drives to the baseline, takes the pull up, and is fouled on the way up. Fouled by McCaffrey. I think the biggest question right now is we're one week away from Selection Sunday. Who will get the one seed in the East? I think North Carolina is in the driver's seat if they can win out between now and next week's ACC tournament. UNLV, Ohio State, and Arkansas certainly set as one seeds in the tournament. West, Midwest, and Southeast. Hubert Davis, nephew of one-time Tar Heel great Walter Davis, who had a big moment in this series, Billy. He really did. It was one of the most uh, dramatic games I've ever seen. Carolina down by eight with 17 seconds to go. Walter Davis hit a shot from about 50 feet to put it in overtime. And Carolina came out victorious. And Phelps not the defender against Hurley is that Rice is. Double team on Hurley. Gets the pass to McCaffrey. Too strong on the baseliner and Kubek. McCaffrey can't believe he missed that shot, but right now his confidence is down a little bit as opposed to where it was before the ankle injury. He's got to get back and put up the positive shot. Straight man to man out of bounds. They go out high to Leitner. Gets the step past Montrose. What a soft touch, even though it didn't go. That's two of them that have rolled around and out. Now Davis as Leitner slips. Christian Leitner at this point, Jim, is not yet mentally tough in this basketball game. He's got to get into it with his mind in addition to his body. Posting up Montrose, here he is, Leitner, working on the freshman, and underneath the cylinder, misses the lay-in. That was a tough shot. Rozier on the rebound. Now, Leitner is a vicious competitor, but he... Montrose. There's, there's another example. He is mentally not into this basketball game yet. So Montrose on the slam. North Carolina, six unanswered. Leitner wanted to do it all. Another shot with the left hand, and he's fouled by Fox. I think Leitner just wants to get started. He wants to get one down. Well, one of the things I noticed, Jim, it's not like him to stand outside and watch two or three taps go up on an offensive board and not be there. He did not hustle back on the defense last time. Now, let's give him credit. He's an outstanding player, but he's not getting it done early here in the ball game. I expect that to change, however. She'll cut back in for Carolina. Rozier is out. Rodel comes in for Davis. Now we have Hurley out and Rice also out. So it'll be interesting to see who brings the ball up for Duke. McCaffrey and maybe Grant Hill will move to the backcourt. The foul was on Fox, his first team foul number six. Leitner averaging 19 points, 10 rebounds a game. It's his first point. Saw Bobby Hurley on the bench. Very unusual. That young man plays a lot of minutes. 45, Clay Buckley. Clay Buckley. Now here's a surprise substitution. He comes in for Leitner. Buckley got the start this week in his final home game as a senior against Clemson and played well. Maybe uh, Coach K saw something he liked, so Buckley's getting some action. There's the back door cut. Didn't work. Fox over Hill. And off the hands of Davis. Jim, what I see from these substitutions is you know Dean Smith is going to substitute early and often. I see Mike Krzyzewski saying it's going to be a little bit of a war of attrition here in this game, both foul-wise and in terms of stamina. So he's going to that bench early as well. Montrose. Figure why waste a foul on Leitner against Montrose. Fox found Rodel cutting to the hole. Grant Hill dishes to Davis, back to Hill. In the lane, followed by Davis. Phelps makes the save, or did he? They say he was out of bounds. Davis is so quick off his feet. Listed at 6'5", 6'6", but he plays like he's 6'8", or 9", with that quickness. Two teams deadlocked for the ACC lead in the regular season finale. 
Buckley saves it for Duke. Now McCaffrey will handle it against Phelps. Drives past him. Buckley left open for the jumper, and the senior hits it. 6'10 senior Clay Buckley. His father played in a few of these battles, so did his uncle Bruce Buckley for North Carolina. Dad went to the Final Four twice for Duke. They lob it inside the Montrose. McCaffrey reached in unwisely. Jim, if you're a guard and you reach in on a big man down low, you should always reach underneath the ball and slap up. Never come down in a chopping motion like that because you're almost certain to foul the stronger man. Foul was called on McCaffrey, his second. Team foul number four. And Buckley took it right across the eyes. It stays in. Montrose at the line. In a game like this, you've got to call that a friendly pat. This freshman wants to go home in four weeks. Indianapolis, the side of the Final Four. Of course, he led his high school team his junior year to a national championship. I mean, to a high school championship, so he'd like nothing more to pair that with a national. Well, they're calling it tightly. Still, Billy and Phelps called on the reach-in. Seventh team foul against the Heels. That'll put Duke on the line with a one-and-one. One. Dean Smith over there working those officials, saying it. let's call it both ways on both ends. Coach Smith turned 60 on Thursday. How many more years do you believe he'll be coaching, Billy? Well, it's all that he's ever done in his adult life. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't want to coach as long as he's healthy. I mean, he keeps talking about retiring, but I don't know why. And I also don't agree with something that my old buddy Al McGuire said the other day. He said that when Dean Smith retires in a few years, whoever gets hired will be fired in three to four years thereafter because you can't replace a legend. He's got to remember, Dean Smith replaced the legend in Frank McGuire. And in Smith's first few years, did not do particularly well. Had a losing season his opening year. Was actually hung in effigy in his third season here. So uh, I think the patience of this university would prove that whoever replaced him will have a good shot. Frank McGuire had won the national championship here in 57, and then Smith right. was here just a couple of years later. Hurley's back in. A moment ago, you saw Leitner return. And believe me, nobody was a bigger legend around Chapel Hill than Frank McGuire during that period. And yeah, Rodel lost the triple, but it's off McCaff uh, off of Hurley, I should say. Excellent switch defensively by Hurley on that play. I was watching TV this morning and saw a nice feature on Bobby Hurley's father and his team at St. Anthony's. And his course, younger brother will be going to Seton Hall. He's a left-handed shooter. Younger brother Danny has yep. already signed for P.J. Carlissimo's team. Belts right off his own foot. Interesting to see how long Dean Smith goes here without bringing that senior backcourt experience back in here with King Rice. Rice has been sitting for a while now. That's five turnovers on the Tar Heels. Look at how versatile Grand Hill is. He comes and plays in the backcourt, turns it over. That carried it right on his hip. Duke's second turnover. And now King Rice King checks Rice. in. In for Phelps. Hubert Davis gets off the bench also. And Rozier. So three substitutions. Rodel will sit. Montross also. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer from the Smith Center on the Carolina campus. Over 21,000 here. North Carolina 11 and 1 at home this year. Only Georgia Tech beat them. That was on Super Bowl Sunday. Reese in the ball game now has exploded as a scorer of late. Let's see if he can get something started. Nice basket by Davis. Brian Reese, another one of the freshmen for North Carolina, number 31. Here's Hill now off the glass, softly by Hill. He has five. Hill's got that great drive and that jump stop, and then explodes again to the floor. This is Reese. Davis right over her. That's a three. Back to the rim. Davis carried the ball. 
Well, Davis does not want to handle the ball in the open court area, but he needed another dribble before Hurley was ready to accept. Well, Duke leads early, and uh, Jim Nance and Billy Packer joined by Pat O'Brien. And Pat, what do you have for us? All right, we're with Calvin Hill here, whose son uh, Grant Hill plays for Duke, and uh, you said it's a little nerve-wracking for you. How can you be nerve-wracked? It's, it's the most nerve-wracking thing I, I've, ever, I've ever experienced being a parent and watching. You have no control. Now, you're, you played football, your son plays basketball, and now you work in baseball. You're vice president of the Orioles. Uh, what about Jim Palmer, as long as we have you here? Well, you know, we're rooting for Jim Palmer. Uh, obviously, you know, if we can get a Hall of Famer on our roster, it helps us on the field and off the field. But, uh, you know, he uh, he's looking pretty good. It just remains to be seen. Get your mind back to basketball. Thanks, Calvin. That's where it is, I tell you. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. All right, Pat, thank you. Rozier misses the lay-in, and we Leitner with the rebound for Duke. Hurley, good pass right in the seam to Hill. That, that'll calm his father down. Grant Hill, pass to Hurley. Tremendous running of the break there by Grant Hill. And Hurley, as always, looking ahead with that head up. Excellent pass by Hurley. Rice tries to penetrate on him. Pulls up. Not Rice's shot. Nope, not good at all. Thomas Hill with the rebound. You can see Hurley's forcing him left. This is Mike Chuszewski told him yesterday in practice. Leitner gets the step by Chilcutt and lays it in. And that was not Chilcutt's fault. He sent his man exactly where he's supposed to, but nobody from the weak side came over to help. First basket for Leitner. He has four points. There again, playing men with the ball so tough. Just not allowing a pass to be made. Underneath, good pass for Reese. Chilcutt with the assist. A lot of interior screening, but that was the first time Chilcutt had a breath to be able to make a clean pass. Smart play by Grand Hill, realizing nobody under, so he didn't take the shot. Worst thing you can do for your team is take a bad shot at the wrong time. Leitner again. Duke's hit its last five shots now. Rice stops the dribble in the corner. Chill cut. 6'10 man takes the three. Ryan Davis for Duke. Is that quick leap again off the floor? Here's a guy who can leap and shoot. Thomas Hill. And if anything, right now, Duke taking the ball to Carolina to the point it looks like they're ready to wilt. Rozier to chill cut. Oh, what a help by Hill. Forced it, forced the turnover into the hands of Leitner. We talk about wilting. I think they have passed the first test for Shashevsky for sure. Well, maybe the only guy I've seen this week more intense than Mike Shashevsky was General Schwarzkopf in terms of the way he talked to his team yesterday. He said it's our system against theirs. Very interesting. Now is Smith going to come out? Surprising, Duke had him on the run and held it up here, giving uh, Carolina an opportunity to catch their breath, and they go zone. Under 10 on the shot clock, Hurley. Five into Laker. Reese with a good rebound, shielding out Thomas Hill. Mychuszewski wanting not to play against that zone. Hurley made the play as Rice was going up for the shot. Inadvertent whistle there. Yeah, inadvertent whistle. You'll see the play right here. An excellent move by the feet by Hurley, and he strips Rice of the ball. There was a whistle blown accidentally, so it's going to be Hurley's ball. Very clean defensive play by Hurley. Nine point Duke lead. And Jim, remember the hand is part of the ball. If you grab that hand when it's in control of the, of the ball, it's still not a foul. Rick Fox has returned, so is Montross and Phelps for the Tar Heels. Bounce pass over to Leitner. Great pass by the freshman, Grant Hill. Leitner was camped in that three-second lane. Leitner with eight now after a slow start. Oh, great play by Leitner. Hurley also, and Hurley against Fox. Swatted away by Fox. 
at the other end. Here's Fox again. Hold on. They call Hubert Davis for traveling. And Jim, on that last play, the double team on Phelps. Leitner stepped out beautifully for Hurley. An 11-point lead on the road for Duke. Jim, here's where experience really prevails. Christian Leitner realizing that Montrose here is not yet down court, doesn't have to worry about him. So he steps out, creating a real problem for Phelps on the dribble, allowing Hurley to come in for what is a beautiful steal. Good double team teamwork right here. And now Hurley gets a piece and they're off and running. Unfortunately for Hurley, he tries to make a play against the bigger Rick Fox who blocks it up against the board cleanly and puts Carolina on the move the other direction. All right, Duke's on a 12-2 run. Front court scoring belongs to the Devils. And they've also out-rebounded North Carolina. It's 8-1, Duke, in offensive rebounds. Hey, you've got to play later. He can bring the ball up the court. Skip pass to Hurley. North Carolina showed a little zone and then had to get back to their man-to-man -man because Duke was holding up. Fox will run it and take it. North Carolina's leading scorer, Rick Fox, his first two of the game, he averages 17. 17, but he does a lot of damage in the second half, just as we saw last week with Dave Johnson up in Syracuse. Dave Johnson earlier today against Georgetown. A steal by Phelps, right back comes Brian Davis for Duke. Inexperienced by Phelps. He's got to learn to protect that ball. Curley gets the step by Phelps. Hold on, traveling. Fourth Duke turnover. Substitutions, Kubek and McCaffrey come in for Duke. Michigan State. Surprised at that Indiana score. You know, Bob Knight's team keeps creeping up on people. The great season they're having at Bloomington. Still an outside shot, in fact, Indiana yeah. for a one seed. And Fox lost his footing. Got the pass to Chilcutt. Early seeing another new face, and King Rice back on him now. They lob it. Grant Hill, what a pass by Hurley. Nine for Hill. Jimmy should never get a cross-court lob pass complete from that far away. Rick Fox, interior passing at its best to Chilcutt. Six for Chilcutt. Three-pointer. That's two for him today. King Rice fell asleep on that one. Eight for Hurley. Bobby Hurley just went and pointed up with Grant Hill back there. Gives him two excellent ball handlers. Really playing with three guards now. Lead is at 10 for Duke. Hubert Davis. He's not afraid to take the three. He's a good one. She'll cut offensive rebound. Rice with Montross on the follow. Good job by Montross catching that ball with those strong two hands, putting it right back up before he brought it down. Montross with six. The heralded freshman only scored a total of four points in the loss at Duke back in January. Montross already has six. Leitner, little six-foot turnaround. And that time Montross accepted the low post position Leitner put on him and he was defenseless once he got the ball. Now Duke not crowding that pass quite as much as they were early on. Maybe a little fatigue setting in. Wild shot by Fox. Now Hurley will wait for the rest of the Blue Devils. Leitner just walking down the court. They've got nine guys on one end. He is a little tired right now. And Montrose should have gone out and double team. See, as what Leitner did to him on the other end of the floor. Look at this near steal by Fox. Rick Fox comes diving through. 
It leaves Kubek open for a three. Big play for Duke there, because Leitner is almost out on his feet with exhaustion right now. This is a big break. It's going to give him a chance to get out. Leitner's holding his side. Here's Fox with a good jump. Of course, not the ball not back. Great hustle on the floor, but Duke with a 13-point lead. Welcome back to the Dean Dome. Carolina trails Duke 39 to 26. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Coming up at halftime, Jim Nance and Billy Packer will join us for a little roundtable to talk uh, hoops as we head into the tournament. We'll, of course, bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights, including uh, the thriller in the Carrier Dome uh, earlier today. And we'll tell you why the little town of Licking, Missouri, may this week be the basketball capital of the world. All that and, as usual, much more at a familiar place. The Prudential at the half, and you guys get no break today. <laughs> we'll look forward to much more. Thanks, Pat. Leitner and Hurley sit totally spent. That was a good move for Duke University, that young man coming out to clean up the floor because Duke really need to get some guys out of the game there. Pat Sullivan, a freshman in for North Carolina, number three. As Rick Fox off the dribble. Rebound to Thomas Hill. There's not been a foul called in this game in the last 10 minutes of action. You know why? Because the officials took control of the game right off the bat, calmed the players down, and now they're playing basketball. McCaffrey off the back of the rim. Rice finds Rodel. Oh, Fox is hustling here. Isn't he? Rick Fox with another great play. A near steal before the timeout. And an offensive rebound and basket there. Now he commits a foul on Davis. So well, who's going to get the one seed in the East, and how will they all be matched up? A week from today, Selection Sunday on CBS, 64-team pairings. Most exciting half hour in sports television, Jim. People waiting around their room, see who's yep. going to be where. Can't wait. We'll be in the studio. Greg Gumbel will be in Kansas City. Next Sunday at 6.30. Fox with two fouls and Davis at the line for Duke. Dean Smith talked to Fox after that last foul and said, you know why? And Rick Fox is so fired up right now, he's got to remember fundamentals, though. You don't go out and try to make a steal at half court when a man's uh, pretty well under control with his dribble. One and one for Brian Davis. Leitner has returned. And Hurley will be coming in for Davis. Fox with his fifth rebound. McCaffrey will have a problem with Rice if Rice drives a little bit too quick for him. Back door to Fox. Off the glass, two for Fox. He now has six. How often did we see that yesterday in practice, both working on it offensively and Duke trying to shut it down defensively? Leitner, jumper. Hey, raises his hands <laughs> in the air and says, where's it been? I don't know. Rodel. Oh. About Fox on that pass. To chill cut. And the previous time down the floor, King Rice got his first assist of the game on the backdoor pass to Fox. North Carolina changing their defense, coming out much higher now. Be smart for Duke to bring the ball back out a little bit. Kubek from the corner. That's his second three from the same spot. Well, I didn't mean out there, Jim, but pretty good play for Duke. But I think it's, when a team's trapping like that, it's good to bring the ball back out and make them run wild for about 30 seconds. Rozier. Rodel's been very aggressive with the ball since he's come into the game. See, now here they are. They're picking up three-quarter court, particularly with Hurley out of the game. See, Duke's smart move right here. Bringing their, their offense out much higher. Trying to get some backdoor cut of their own. Make Carolina overcommit. Oh, Davis just palmed it. 
at the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Yeah, Jim, a lot of people want to know what palming is. That's what that last play was. Davis yeah. just carried it all the way across. Now, when Michael Jordan gets by with that in the NBA, but not in the college level. I think a lot of guys get away with that in the oh, NBA. Yeah. Billy, three-point shooting in this game. Duke has made four out of six. Carolina 0 for 4. But Carolina only shot 35% against Duke in the first game, and that's been their problem here in this one as well. That was their lowest uh, field goal percentage of the season in that first game against Duke. Final minute of the first half. Duke with an 11-point lead. Early three-pointer. Chill cut for Carolina. Looking for the cross-court passes here. Three-pointer, chill cut. In and out. Hurley was on the line, on the baseline. There you see Duke hitting from the outside. North Carolina's ice cold so far. Primarily because none of their threes have been uncontested. Hubert Davis. Good pump fake. Sure was, Jim. He pump faked and made it look like he was going to pass. He really froze the defender. Davis with eight. Duke will look for the final shot. The four corners, something that Dean Smith successfully has done here for years. Hill goes ahead and takes the drive. They gave it to him. Blocking foul on Carolina's Hubert Davis, his first. his first. Team foul nine, number nine. Clay Buckley has come back into the game. Gets and Leitner out of there to make sure he doesn't pick up a cheap foul in the last seconds. How about the pace of the game so far, Billy? About what you expected? Well, the pace is what I expected. However, I, I really felt that North Carolina could get something going inside, get King Rice uh, maneuvering the ball a little bit better, and. and Consequently, open up some outside shooting for Rick Fox. That hasn't happened in North Carolina, particularly from the outside, has been totally ineffective. Does Christian Hitler look like he could be suffering from a little flu or cold or something? Doesn't look well, yeah, does he? He doesn't. And he was holding his side there earlier in the first half when he asked to come out. Hill gets the lead back to 10. He has 10 points. Off the hands of Buckley. Carolina will inbound it underneath. Six seconds left in the half. Man-to-man -man play. Look for Rozier and Chilcutt inside. Both of them capable of getting off a shot here. Buckley Rozier, all over Rozier, Chilcutt. Rozier didn't flash. Box has to force the three. Almost. Rozier for didn't flash for the ball. He had an opportunity. That's the end of the first half with the score. Duke 46, North Carolina 36. Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half after this message and a word from your local station. The game has been very well played defensively on both ends, but it's amazing, Jim. 19-point differential in two areas. Free throw shooting for Duke and also three-point shots. That's, that's tough to make up, down 10, but 19 of those came in those two areas. Let's check some of the halftime numbers, and uh, Carolina had its worst three-point shooting performance of the season at Duke, making only two of 13 in that one. They haven't even made one today. Turnovers, Duke has forced the most, nine Tar Heel turnovers. And let's check out the backcourt numbers. Clearly, Hurley's had the better game so far. And the uh, top scores, Leitner with 12. He got it up to 12 by the end of the half. Chilcutt and uh, Davis have uh, eight each and for North Carolina. Something else jumps out, Jim, and the fact that Lynch, the second leading scorer for North Carolina, has zero. Well, he got in the three fouls uh, situation real early, so right. foul trouble for Lynch. And uh, Rick Fox about to inbound it to start the second half. And uh, this is five years now that Dean Dome has been open. These two met in the very first game 
played here, January 18th, 1986. And the man who scored the first basket ever at the Smith Center is in attendance today, Mark Allery. On the uh, disabled list for the Washington Bullets, he's down to watch this game. Allery, a star at Duke, scored the first bucket ever here at the Dean Dome. Chill cut to start the second half. Good rebound by Davis. Jimmy, you know who's the last guy to make the last shot in the old gym, Carmichael? J.R. Reed. Jimmy Valvano. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> when the game was over, he ran out on the floor and said, I'm going to make the last one here. Hurley now with 10. Nice. Almost got in trouble on the penetration. Davis misses the three. Look at Davis dribble by the competition. Almost palmed it again, Billy. Well, he kept his hand on top of the ball on that one. Good playground dribble. Reaching around, stealing it is Davis. Lynch gets the pass back to him. With the body, all kinds of contact. It'll go against Grant Hill. You know, another first-half stat. North Carolina averages nine steals a game, and they did not have one steal at all. No steals in the first half. I challenge you, Billy, on Syracuse being in the driver's seat at the moment in the East. I still think it's Carolina. They're, they're ranked higher in the polls, and they're much, much higher in the computer. Well, you made your case. I'm making a point. I think Syracuse is in that number one spot. They won't be playing at home, however, as we know. Cole Fieldhouse would be the place they would send the Orangemen. Of course, it's all a, a moot point, uh, Carolina and Syracuse, if the Tar Heels lose today. In any case, I think the committee this year has probably got the easiest time they've ever had seeding the top eight. They just stick an Indiana in there, a long pass. Oh, what a catch. Leitner. Rebound, Fox. He just took that ball away from Hill. On the floor, gets it to Lynch. Game getting a little wild just as it started. I thought that Fox traveled and charged on the play, no call. That Mike, Mike Krzyzewski did too. See the play right here. He wanted to jump on that, figuring that it was Hurley who created it. And down on the other end, you might have said the same thing on the, and Mike's saying it's either a jump ball or it was a walk. I would agree with him. 6'7", sophomore George Lynch. Top rebounder on this team. That's surprising. And the second leading scorer, although you really wouldn't know it, would you, Billy? He's a quiet scorer. Very seldom has the ball in his hands to make a play, usually the recipient with good movement without the ball. You notice how Duke has every man on the foul line when Carolina shoots. The reason for that is Carolina very good at getting offensive rebounds on missed foul shots. Putting pressure on Hurley. Good block. There's a steal. Chilcutt looks around, just flips it in. That was the only way he could get that shot off, knowing Leitner was coming. Down to six. The Duke lead down to six. Leitner, good pass. Grant Hill slams it home. Leitner puts so much pressure on the defense now that with that ability to handle that ball outside, even a guy like Chilka, who's a normal forward, is having a hard time handling him on the perimeter. Box Chilka had it slapped out of his hands. Leitner on the help that time. Early surveying and away from the ball. Now remember we had the little conversation by the same official at the start of the game. He's trying to get things settled down as he did in the start. And you pointed out, Jim, they went 10 minutes without a foul once they had that little confab. Early not being guarded. Takes the three. Hubert Davis with the rebound. Fox. Finds the trailer, chill cut, too strong. Thomas Hill in the corner, runs it down for Duke. Thomas Hill, Grant Hill, and Davis get off the floor so quickly that they're beating taller men to the basket. And again, 
Grant Hill with 14, and the lead's back to 10. It's just so quick off the floor. 6'7", 6 6'6", 6 6 6 but they play much bigger than that. And Duke dropping back into his zone. Bryce lobs it to Chilcutt. There's that quickness again. By Thomas Hill. Duke gets it back. Hurley to Leitner. Going away from the basket. Leitner Brilliant fading play. away and scoring. Brilliant play. Rice driving full thrust and draws the foul on Hurley. <laughs> Hurley will Hurley will complain anytime he's ever called for a foul. And he better watch himself here on this one. He doesn't want to pick up a tee. By the way, we checked and uh, Leitner is not sick today. He's not ill, although we thought he looked a little sluggish at times. Thomas Hill goes out of the game and McCaffrey back in for Duke. Montrose, who played very well in the first half in the few minutes he got in. Fox. Somebody got a hand on him. Coming up next, we've got the final round from Doral. And here's an updated leaderboard. Andy Bean, he's won this tournament three times, the only three-time winner at Doral. Mediate and Cochran. And Lanny Watkins, your guy Lanny. That's right. Big day for the Deacons yesterday with their win over NC State. Puts them in third place in the ACC. And Lanny up there on the leaderboard. Can't be anything better for Deacon fans than that. I'll tell you, Wake Forest and the coach done their, uh, the, the, the job done by the coach, Coach Odom. Dave Odom. Quite an awakening this year for, uh, for the... It was a talented team that just had to learn how to win. Once it started to win some games and gain confidence, it's played extremely well. There's Lynch. Battling on the offensive boards as he does so well. North Carolina picking up on his press, but kind of tough to press a club that's got so many good ball handlers. Hurley from the corner, three time. This is the best game Hurley's had from just pure perimeter shooting. He's looking for that shot today. I had him earlier up this year up against Virginia, and he did not look for the shot that really cost him. After the Lynch miss. Montross called on that foul, and there's a timeout on the floor. Duke's lead is at 12. Carolina playing for the ACC regular season title and a first round bye in the ACC tournament. You can see the ACC championships, at least a piece of them. Duke and North Carolina have been in on a high percentage of them, Billy. The loser of this game will play Clemson in the ACC tournament Friday in Charlotte. Unusual role for Clemson. They were first place regular season last year and dropped to eighth this year. First time in conference history. Somebody went from number one to number eight. It's tough to double team a good ball handling club, and that's what's happening in North Carolina right now. Leitner with the left hand. Good passing around by Duke. Snapping it quickly. Fox knew he was fouled, so he put it up. From three-point land, he'll get three free throws. But they say he was in the act of shooting. Foul is on Davis. He's saying it's a two-point shot that he was over the line. Jim, I think that Dean Smith is, is making a very strategic move here, trying to go out and press. And, and that's supposed to create some turnovers, get his team back in the game defensively. But I really feel that he's he's making a gamble here that's going to work against him. And there's the foot over the three-point line, so it is just two. So the point I'm making here is if you press a team that's as good at handling the ball as Duke is and they convert on you, they have an opportunity to extend that margin quickly. Then the clock becomes your opponent. So Dean Smith making a little rush here, hoping that he can get back under 10 in a, in a matter of two or three turnovers. Rick Fox, the top scorer of the past two years for North Carolina. Of course, he beat Oklahoma, the number one seed and number one in the rankings going into the tournament last year with a shot at the buzzer. 
Showed Dean Smith there. He has beaten in his career seven Hall of Fame coaches and has 13 victories over coaches who have won national championships. Walk Caffrey got away with it, Billy. Yep. Leitner got hit on the head. It's a five on three. Should convert here. Phelps, Phelps lost went his... down. Yep. And a tie-up situation. It belongs to Duke. Phelps Possession just... arrow belongs to Duke. Phelps could not turn that corner with that. Looked like he had hurt his knee slightly there, but just couldn't plant and turn the corner. Well, you've got to convert when you've got five on three. Billy, people around the country may say Kenny Anderson's got to be the MVP of the ACC. I think oh, I, without I, question, it's got to be Leitner. And here again, look at their defense. The drop back into his zone. Dean Smith taking some, trying to figure out what defense can stymie this Duke club. Well, that's one way to stop him. Yep. He went to the press, and that gave too many open opportunities for Duke. Now he drops back to the zone. He's got to come up with some determination here before the 10-minute mark as to what is his key defense. Phelps brings it up with Rice on the bench. Chilcutt and Davis, along with Rozier and Fox, in for Carolina. And Rozier had it taken away by Hurley, but not without a foul. Second on Hurley, sixth on Duke. Clifford Rozier is going to be an outstanding low post scorer in his career here at North Carolina. But what he has had a hard time doing is making that transition from high school to college where he wants to put the ball on the floor down in tight against traffic. And he's just getting the ball picked off. But he has some great moves inside. In time, he'll be something. Oh, almost a, yep, a steal by Duke. And from behind, Rozier commits the Carolina foul. And it doesn't surprise me Dean Smith goes to King Rice. I know guys are going to be weary in this game, but he's got to get experience back in there in the backcourt. That's the second foul, second team foul on Carolina in this half. Duke has six, committed six. And here's the point zone by North Carolina. And you can see what Mike Krzyzewski is doing, saying, hey, we like it better when you press us. So we're going to hold the ball and let the clock work on down. Nice play by McCaffrey to fill the open hole. What did he say yesterday? Our system against theirs. I mean, it was a real commitment. Kubek. He has nailed three from the corner today. Three threes for the senior from Duke. Dean Smith may have to go back to just hard-nosed man-to-man. Duke goes to his zone. Devils' largest lead at 16 now. Fox. Look at Hill. Tip the ball to himself. Now North Carolina went through a stretch early on. They were way down against Connecticut. They got way down against Kentucky. Came back to win. Kubek almost took it again. Oh, look at that. If they get a basket here, you know it's not your day if you're North Carolina. Reminds you of the play in the first half where Fox almost made a steal and they got in the corner to Kubek for a three. There you see the 2-3 matchup zone by Duke. Duke may be young, but they're the kind of team that never strikes you as one who will give up the big lead. Well, North Carolina's got to figure out a way to stymie Duke. You know, it's one thing that they're not having, they're not being able to score, but they haven't found out a defense yet to shut Duke down. There's the walk. Walk on Kubek. 12.30 left in this game. Mike Krzyzewski didn't like that, not because it was a walk, but because now they're in a position to use the clock wisely. No need to put the ball on the floor and take off inside. Thomas Hill, Thomas Hill in for Grant Hill. And again, by going zone, what they're doing is forcing North Carolina to have to move the ball some and not go for the quick score. Rick Fox as a back pick on Kubek. You have to see that coming and fight your way back there to make the pass impossible. Hurley 
outside shooting supreme today. The, the half-court trap will not work. Duke's too good a passing team against it, but particularly the way they're shooting their threes. Hurley has 16, Billy. Davis matches it at the other end. Now, if the scouting report is right, Duke is going to have to really be conscious on Davis now. They like to play him hard after he's made a shot. Check him the next time down floor. See, Leitner throws right over the tracks. Left an open lane, and Hurley misses the layup. Carolina basketball off the back of the glass. Really has been Duke from the start. Jim Nance and Billy Packer as Duke has made 9 of 13 in the second half. Three-point shooting, the one by Hubert Davis of North Carolina was the first successful three of the game for the Tar Heels, and Leitner leads with 16 points. Jim, here is why that last play was so effective. Look at this lane here. The reason that there's a lane is Carolina's got to get out tight. They've had three-point shooting driving them crazy all day. Hurley puts it on the floor and goes inside before North Carolina has a chance to react. They're so conscious of the three-point play, Hurley gets an open lane to the basket. He doesn't convert, but the reason it was open is because they're so effective again with that three. Now Duke goes back to man-to-man. -to -man. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him go back to the zone first chance they get. Just want to show something different. Kubek almost took it away. Rice underneath the Chilcutt. Turn around. Very high arching shot. Chilcutt missing. Kubek on the rebound. Now here's where the pressure of senior game, I think, is working against North Carolina. I thought it would be to their advantage early on, but now they can sense this game getting away from them. There's still a lot of time on the clock, and yet you see them pressuring some tough shots. North Carolina deciding they've got to go straight man to man. You can see Dean Smith tried three different defenses, hoping to make a breakthrough, and it didn't happen. He's got Rick Fox now on Bobby Hurley, who will, who will get by him. Thomas Hill, high point man in the first game between these two with 20. Over to Kubek. Good block out by Chilka. That poor execution by Duke didn't have the ball in the hands of the right man after 10. Rice drives, scores off the glass. Are they going to give it to him? I don't think so. That was NBA-like continuation. You see the move here? There's the foul. Certainly not in the act of shooting once the foul had been committed. Billy, they gave him the basket. If they, if they give him the basket, it is going to count, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that is a continuation. I thought he made contact long before that shot even got started. Third foul on Hurley. And the act of shooting starts as he's creating the shot. But that one looked like he bumped him early on. King Rice has moved past Jeff Lebo today into third on the all-time Carolina list in assists. Kenny Smith, Phil Ford, and now King Rice. Two pretty good backcourt men in front of him. Two All-Americans, NBA players, and Phil Ford, of course, player of the year, senior year in college. Brian Reese in for North Carolina. Double team on Hill, and a turnover. Jim, Hill has to realize that the double team is coming and get rid of the ball when he sees it coming as opposed to letting it take place. Montrose, with those long arms, is a tough target to throw over. Montross lost it. What a scramble for it. Back to Carolina. Hubert Davis. Oh, Leitner with the block. block. Blocked by Leitner Lynch on the follow. Boy, don't fault Christian Leitner for a hustle on this sequence. He must have had the ball on five or six different occasions before it ever got to this point. Sensational block. Leitner stays right with Davis, makes the great block, comes up with the ball a couple of times here, but can't get it to stay in his hand. There's Mato. There's one. There's two. There's three. 
Here comes the block. It's going to be the fourth time he touches the ball. Then he touches it one more. There's another one. Five. There's six. It's out of his hand, and then he commits the foul. Six touches and a foul. And a foul. They'll have another free throw. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Assistant coach Phil Ford, the last time these two teams were tied going for the outright ACC title was 1978. Phil Ford's final game at Carolina, and he scored 34 in a North Carolina victory. Lynch going for the three-point opportunity. The foul was on Leitner, his third, before the timeout. Carolina goes back to just hard-nosed, man-to-man defense. Leitner lost it. Ends up right in the hands of Hurley. Uh, good, good pass. Forward. Set up Grant Hill. Uh, that was Lynch's fall all the way. He had the collapse to the inside when he saw Leitner make that move, and he just held his ground. That ends an 8 to nothing run by Carolina. 16 by Grant Hill. She'll cut right over Leitner. 12 for the senior from Utah, Alabama. Big game against Alabama this year is high scoring total. See, Leitner causing a lot of problems here with his versatility moving outside on Joka. Interesting, you use your center as your third ball handler, allowing Hill and Davis the two forwards. That was backcourt, wasn't it? it Looks like it touched yep. the line. Doesn't matter now. Carolina gets it back. Davis with the save. What a pass to Lynch. Here comes the run right now, Jim. Here's where Duke has got to be careful. You can just sense momentum shifting here a little. And the shift came on his hard-nosed man-to-man defense. Hurley quiets the crowd with the jumper and beats King Rice. 18 for Hurley. Through the legs of Fox. Whoops, that's a little bit too much of a risky pass when you're on your back. Right, he's better off. It was the arrow pointing in favor of Carolina. He's better off just holding that ball, being tied up, and they'd have had possession. 7.30 remaining. Now they go into four corners to try to take a little heat off this tough man-to-man -to -man pressure. And there again, Leitner, the man that steps out on top. They've got some good matchups here. Duke does. They've got Fox out here on Hurley. And Hurley should be able to beat him. Leitner was posting up an errant pass. Rice will penetrate. Twisting move. Oh, that's that's got to go. go. That's got to go. Yes, sir. That counts. It was, yes, they now let the crowd know it was goaltending. And a foul. King Rice, great competitor, has often been maligned throughout his career here in regard to what everybody expected him to be, another Phil Ford. But he's showing competitive fire right now. That's the fourth personal on Bobby Hurley. Rice with the free throw can cut it to eight. Still a lot of time, seven minutes to go. It's been a real chess match in the second half, watching Dean Smith try to figure out how to come back. Changed his defenses a couple of times, has basically gone substitution-wise with fellows that got him here, but it's been a key defensive strategy move on his part. It looked like Yep, Billy McCaffrey hurt that ankle again. Yeah, he's coming up, limping to the front court. Double team on Hill, and Rice reached in, got a piece of the arm. His second, only the third team foul on North Carolina, was 6:44 remaining in the game. Derek Phelps comes back in for King Rice. Well, Dean Smith just trying to give King Rice a little rest here. But he can't keep him out of this game very long. Three freshmen, four freshmen yeah. on the floor. Rodel joins Sullivan, Phelps, Rozier, and Reese. 
A chance for Duke right here. They can't get the ball inbounds. Kubek has to call timeout. Duke is left with only one timeout remaining. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Hertz. Whether you rent a car for business or pleasure, Hertz is America's wheels. Pizza Hut delivery all over America. The switch is on the Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut making it great. And by Holiday Inn Hotels. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know. And welcome back to the Dean Dome. One way to save on introductions. This is Michael Jordan's dad, James Jordan. And thanks for joining us. What's your favorite Carolina moment? Well, Pat, I got a couple of uh, favorite Carolina moments. Naturally, I, I can't forget the, the championship game, but I think one of my biggest moments of uh, remembrance was when uh, we were playing Maryland, left to put his boy in as a ploy, and Michael blocked the ball, and then the camera sort of caught Michael sneaking around to see if he made a green, clean block. We haven't heard much from Michael. What's he doing these days? Is he playing ball somewhere? Well, <laughs> he's probably playing basketball. Not much golf right now. All right, back to you guys. Something interesting, Michael Jordan in one of his last games here at Carolina because he didn't play as a senior was in a double overtime game with this club that 1984 North Carolina team is one of the most talented of all time. It did not win an ACC championship and did not get to a regional final back in 84. His third foul on Rozier. I'll bet Mike's watching this one right now. I would imagine. Jim Leitner did a smart thing in that last inbounds. He came back and asked the referee if the ball could be thrown into the backcourt. It's a kid that's really thinking on the floor. And he started off this game a little slow, but he's gotten into it uh, after that, about 10-minute mark in the first half. Carolina on a 14-4 run and a dangerous pass to Leitner. Dean Smith still has his four freshmen on the floor. McCaffrey with a three. Kubek comes crashing in, commits the foul. So with six minutes, ten seconds on the game clock, that is the tenth, tenth team foul on Duke. North Carolina has committed four. Blue Devils left with one timeout. And the possession arrow belongs to the home team. Jim, how many coaches do you know that down nine in a game that's for the conference regular season, and you pointed out all the other things on the line, would have four freshmen and no starters. I guess Rodel did start in this particular game. Mm -hmm. One starter in the game going down his stretch. Now, you think he's got to come back here shortly, you know, with that front line. I think Rick Fox is ready to get back uh, he, here. I guarantee you he's ready. He shows a lot of confidence in your bench. 0 for 2 by Reese. I think I'd have shown enough confidence here. I'd have to come back with those regulars. No move to the bench nope. to this point. Comes some full court pressure by this young group from Carolina. Leitner foul called on Rodel. Next Saturday on CBS, we'll have the Big East semifinals from Madison Square Garden, beginning at 12 Eastern. The finals on Sunday. And the ACC finals next Sunday, as well as, of course, the selection show. That was right off Hurley, right in front of us here. You know, Hurley's going to have to be careful. He, he gripes on every call. And one of these times, the official's just going to nail him with a technical. And here you see Dean Smith waited no longer. Here comes the regulars back. Stretch drive is on. Six minutes on the money. So back in for North Carolina. Chilcutt and Rice who brings the ball into the front court. Hubert Davis, George Lynch, and Rick Fox. And Duke goes zone. What it does, it takes a little bit off the clock in terms of Carolina looking for the decent shot. Lynch off of Hill, off the back of Hill. Nice flash, though, by Lynch inside that 2-3 zone. That's where it's always available. Pass was a little bit too tough for Chilcutt to hang on to. 22 on the shot clock. You notice how Fox has not been able to get any threes going today with any consistency at all. Usually about half of his yeah. attempts are threes. They, they got to figure out how to get him some. Now he'll shoot two free throws. 
And you notice Duke, a team accustomed to playing hard-nosed man-to-man, seems to reach and commit fouls more when they're in the zone than when they're playing pressure. That's the fourth foul on Leitner. They first announced it as the third on Leitner, but it's number four. So four on Leitner, four on Hurley. Surprised Mike Krzyzewski doesn't go to Buckley right away and give Leitner at least, and I'll tell you why, at least give him a couple of... He's going with Hurley here now, but I think it's time for Leitner to come out because Leitner's a guy you want in the game at the end for his ball handling ability and also his free throw shooting ability. Here you see Leitner going out. Hurley for Leitner. Yeah, you just could not take a chance and leave Christian Leitner in there because you want him in the last three minutes. Box makes one of two. Tar Heels one of four on these free throws in the last minute. And Grant Hill has really done a nice job rebounding today in that forward spot. Spreading the court, setting their offense up above the foul line now. Thomas Hill in traffic. Almost got the reversal. A Duke not finding a way to score. Lynch. No foul off the hands of Kubik. Look at how small a team Duke has on the floor. Kubek and Grand Hill, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, the two tallest out there. It's a very small team. North Carolina's got to punch the ball down inside the chill cut. And then crash the boards with all with four men. As you know, Duke's not looking to break on it. 71-63, Duke. Set play for Fox to take the three. Taken away by Grant Hill. 4.40 on the clock. Now, on this end of the floor, being a smaller team, they should have an advantage. Thomas Hill wiped out by Lynch. Clean play, though. Thomas Hill has had 11 straight games where he scored in double figures. Today, Thomas Hill has only two. Now, Jim, we saw this young man have a great game against Oklahoma where he was our player of the game. He's twice been named uh, ACC Player of the Week. He is one of those quiet fellas that's coming on the scene now to be one of the league's better players. This is the first free throw attempt, Billy, of the second half by the Blue Devils. North Carolina has been to the line 15 times in the second half. Leighton are not in the game, but in the game. Well, we have two children on the floor right now of Olympic track people. Thomas Sills, father, was a, Olympian, right? Right, bronze medalist in uh, the hurdles, 72, high hurdles. And Rick Fox's mother. High jumper. Right, for Canada, who's happened to be here today. And again, there's that 2-3 zone. Short cut, long range three. I don't think that Carolina is doing the right thing. So they got to pop the ball down inside, take advantage of their height. The move Chilcutt outside really works in the Duke's advantage. Four minutes on the clock. The mismatch here is to get Kubek back the ball with Chilcutt on it. There he is. Double team. Hubert Davis with the steal. Davis fouled and scored it. Now here's the dilemma for Mike Krzyzewski, and he's going to go back with Leitner. He needs to get a superior ball handler out there. Now, Kubek was the perfect man to get the ball to, but he doesn't recognize the double team and allows himself to be played by both Chilcutt and Davis. See, as soon as Kubek gets the ball, he tries to go over the top of Davis. And a good job by, by Davis, not only on the steal, but on the shot. 15 for Hubert Davis, and there he is, Christian Leitner. Saddled with four fouls, but back in with 3.52 remaining. Davis with this free throw can cut the lead to seven. 80% free throw shooter. Rodol returns. Davis will rest. And now you see Dean Smith trying to play a defensive team on one end of the floor and an offensive team on the other. So he's got in his freshman chasers right now, figuring that they're fresh. And they're going to be aggressive. It's the four freshmen, except and uh, Montross is the one freshman not on the floor.
Double. There it is. There it is. Reese. Jam session. Now remember, Duke only has one more timeout. They wasted that timeout on the inbounds pass. Foul called on Sullivan, who can't believe it. Now here comes the offensive team back into the game. So Dean Smith got exactly what he wanted. Great job by the freshman. Three seniors in that huddle for North Carolina playing their final game at the Smith Center. Honored before this contest with all the family on hand introduced as well. Closing out their career at Chapel Hill in this building. One and one for Leitner. When you talk about senior classes, how about the senior classes? This fella has put back to back. Duke's been, these have been the three Final Fours, the record 190 and, and 30 over that time. Danny Ferry, senior class, also got to the Final Four three years, 117 and 27 wins. It's 109 and 30 in senior. Leitner Cooley, six and both. In the zone, again, creating a number of passes to be thrown before they can attack. Fox passes up the three, and Lynch wasn't ready for it. And Dean Smith said, Rick, take the three. Now he's going to come back with our defensive team again. Ohio State edges Michigan State. Judd Heathcote having tough time getting that team over the top. But preseason number three or four in most polls. Just fell behind right off the bat. A couple of quick losses. Almost gave one away this week to Minnesota, but look for Michigan State in the tournament. Will be in the field. McCaffrey realizes the clock's the deal now. Foul on Rodel. That's the eighth team foul. It'll be a one and one situation. Here at the Smith Center, Jim Nance and Billy Packer along with Pat O'Brien. You know, Duke's won here two of the last three years. There's only a one other school that has a winning record at the Smith Center, having played a minimum of two games here, Billy. You know who it is? No. Rhode Island. Rhode the Island. tournament. That was a trick uh -huh. question. Uh -huh. ah, Rhode Island. How about the well, Duke has got two wins on this floor in the NCAA tournament. Well, that, you count yeah. them. It's Duke and Rhode Island. Duke's four and three in this building with those two wins. Yeah, but they weren't against the University of North Carolina. Right. That's more than a trick play. Yeah. It's not even fair. <laughs> Chill cut with a three. inbound a 19 point lead down to four playing for the ACC regular season crowd and Jim you notice that North Carolina not guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds a hold as Dean Smith brought back the uh, defensive unit foul on Sullivan his second and the standings Dead even, Duke and North Carolina, 10 and 3. Duke last won the ACC, 1986. North Carolina last won the conference in 88. Winner gets a bye in the ACC tournament, first round. The loser plays Clemson. Thomas Hill with a 1 and 1. Nice follow through. Backed off the line a little bit, but really stayed with the shot with his hands. Can't ask for better form than that. He'll four for four in the game's final minutes from the line today. Fox can cut it to three. Got a piece of it. Hurley got a piece of his arm.
Interesting, isn't it, how Hurley and Fox have been matched up a couple of times today, and that time, little Hurley got a hand on it on Fox's three-point attempt. Well, Fox, they know he's got to go for the three. They know that he has to go for the three, so they're charging him out there, and Rick Fox not really that strong at pumping that ball and driving by. Again, we're one week away from the selection show, Selection Sunday. What a day that will be, the Big East final, the ACC final, and then at 6.30 Eastern time, we'll have Greg Gumbel from Kansas City revealing the 64 teams and the pairings. We'll be in the studio, Billy, and we'll have a chance to analyze those matchups. Lynch has fouled out. He was in trouble in that area from the start today. Eight points, averaging 13, so Lynch below his average. And Rozier comes in for him. And you've got to figure that the man that, that Carolina is going to be looking for, Fox and Davis, spotting up on the wings to shoot the threes. There's still a lot of time at 220. I don't really think that they have to consciously be thinking all threes here. Since Leitner came in the back, back in the game, Duke is, of course, big enough to play him on that back line. In and out for Davis. Seven-point lead. Rice can think about maybe driving into that zone and pitching back outside. Try to, try to penetrate down into the zone. King Rice too long on the three. They slap it back out to him, however. Only Chilcutt and Davis have made threes today. Here's one by Fox. Fox also wanted a foul on that shot. 158 remaining, a four-point lead for Duke. Over 21,000 decked out with Carolina blue pom-poms. Watching a comeback today in the final home game of the season. Each team with only one timeout remaining. North Carolina was down 67-48 in the second half. And since that time, they've outscored Duke 30, or 26 to seven. That's not right. 26 to 11. Kristen Leitner moving well to the ball. Really helps to have a 6'10 guy as your outlet. One that you know can catch the ball and make a play. Second time the Tar Heels have trimmed it to four. Carolina got it back to seven a moment ago. Excellent overplays. Curly finds Thomas Hill. 15 on the shot clock, approaching it. Best thing here is as they regroup, try to keep that ball moving. Down to 10 seconds, now Hurley gonna try to take Rice, huh? From the baseline, Thomas Hill. Beautiful floating shot. You know, Hurley has not tried to go ahead one-on-one -on -one with Rice on the, in that situation today. Chill right? cut. That'll He'll be three. shoot three, Billy, yep. yep. And Hurley's out of the game. That's number five on Hurley. And you gotta wonder what Bobby Hurley was thinking about following a guy like Chilcutt, who coming into today's game had only taken six threes. He's not the kind of guy you expect to bury him. You, the percentages are to let him have it. All five of Hurley's fouls were committed in this half. Goes out with 18 games, a big uh, 18 points, a big offensive game for him today. Now here's where it's so key that Leitner was able to stay in the game because you lose your primarily ball handler. Grant Hill will have to move in the back with McCaffrey, and Leitner moves as the primary recipient of most of their passes. Chilcutt will shoot three. Fouled while attempting a three-point shot. He has not been at the line today, although he has scored 15. Well, on the year has only been to the line 65 times, so you can see, even as an interior player, he's the kind of guy that uh, doesn't take it hard to the basket. Shoots those little turnaround jumpers. Hands up, Billy, you should have told us you get to me. That's just a mental mistake by Bobby Hurley as to who to foul and when. Two shots, guys, two. 
Two more for Chilcutt. Jimmy kidding me yesterday about what player from North Carolina is from Utah, and I didn't get that question either. <laughs> but I'm going to show you something kind of interesting about where these guys are from. Neither one of these teams have a player from the state of North Carolina. It's some long-distance recruiting. I'll say. That's Utah, Alabama for Chilcutt, <laughs> who makes all three to cut at the three. Closest Carolina's been since the first half. And still a lot of time because Duke will have to give up the ball with a shot clock. Leitner almost lost it. Well, Thomas Hill's the guy you got to be worried about. He's hanging around down on that baseline and can finish the play, as we've seen. Kubek left open. Short. A three will tie it. Chilcutt will fire it. Off the back of the rim, but Fox is there. He was trying to pray that shot in. Chilcott's got to stay up on the floor. Derek Phelps, air ball on a three. Oh, no tie up. The possession arrow would have given it back to the Tar Heels. A foul instead. A foul on Chilcutt. So Carolina comes back from 19, actually has an attempt to tie it. Well, Jim, I don't think Phelps wanted to put that one up, Billy. Well, you know, you have a freshman again out in the ball game, a big shot, something he might not re really be ready for. You really, with a lot of time on the clock, they really had to be thinking Rick Fox there. At least give him one shot of the three. He's their best man at the position. Talking about all the senior classes at Duke. Kubek in play. The first three years, three final fours. This year, they'll go for the full sweep. There's only been three schools in the history of the final four, four out of five years that made it to the final four. Duke, UCLA, and Cincinnati. Kubek will have one more attempt when we come back with 17 seconds left. When it came to redefining the word luxury, it wasn't a Webster. It was Oldsmobile. The 98 defines luxury in terms of how much you get, not how much you spend. Anti-lock brakes, fuel-efficient power, computerized suspension, technology found in cars costing thousands more. And you can always take a Webster at his word. The night on CBS starts out with 60 Minutes. Bob Simon and his three fellow CBS newsmen will tell the story that they endured as prisoners of the Iraqis. Murder, she wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie Lies Before Kisses. Jim, look on the clock. There's 17 seconds to go. And I told you about Walter Davis' moment in history. With 17 seconds to go in 1974, North Carolina was down by eight and came back and won again. Now they're down by, by four, half that margin. Walter Davis' nephew, Hubert Davis, is on the floor. We'll attempt to pull off another nice move shocking by, comeback. Nice move by Mike Krzyzewski here. Picking up full court, forcing North Carolina to use some clock just to get it over half court. Fox wanted to go up with it. Now he does. Follow by Chilcutt. Rebound by Thomas Hill. High in the air. He'll come back and shoot two. Thomas Hill is underrated no more. He is a total ball player. Great quickness off the floor. Nice soft shot on the inside. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. 81-77. Seven seconds remaining. Final round coverage of Doral is next, and Jack Nicholas is back in contention. Oh, what a story that would be to see the Golden Bear at 51 win on the PGA Tour again. Hey, another weird stat, Jim. No team in the ACC has ever won the regular season and the conference tournament championship and failed to make it to the Final Four. Hill, if he makes this free throw, will hit double figures. When it appeared with four minutes remaining in the game, he wouldn't make it. He keeps a streak, a personal streak of 12 games alive. As makes I said, sense. a secret no more. This young man can really play. Winstrom with the long baseball pass. Intercepted by Davis. McCaffrey. 
And there you have it. Duke has won at North Carolina and won the ACC regular season title. North Carolina today only three of 17 from three-point range. Duke gets a bye in the ACC first round tournament. And the Chevrolet most valuable players, Bobby Hurley for Duke, 18 points, six assists, Pete Chilcutt in his final game at the Smith Center, 18 points for North Carolina. Checking the amount of $1,000 donated to each college's general scholarship fund. So for Billy Packer and Pat O'Brien, I'm Jim Nance saying so long from the Smith Center, where the final score is Duke 83 and North Carolina 77. Big East Tournament coming up next week, folks. This has been a presentation of...